Next question is from Taylor Becca. When should mus- muscle finishers be used and how important are they? Who picked the questions today? I did. Who did? Yeah. You did this one on Absolutely. purpose right here. Finisher. So uh, mu- muscle finishers are, that's bodybuilding jargon, right? And that basically means exercises you do at the end of a workout to mm. give you a better pump. <clears throat> and they typically are isolation exercises, cable exercises, <laughs> machines. And it's like, okay, so you know, for chest, a finisher would be like a cable crossover, right? Or for... For delts, it might be like a lateral, you know, or for biceps, like it might be like a, to any as many reps as possible yeah, or something. Exactly, it's just to kind of squeeze more blood in the muscle. So, you know, when should they be used? Well, if you're going to do them like a bodybuilder, I do them at the end of the workout, obviously. But really, the value of finishers is that these are exercises that don't produce a lot of damage, but they allow you to add more volume. That's really what it is. So, okay, so I did the bulk of my workout. I know I can add more volume, but if I let's say it's chest again, and I just said cable crossovers, right? I just finished my chest workout. If I do three more sets of bench press, it's it's a compound lift. There's a lot of load. It causes a lot of damage. That'll tip me over over training. How can I add more volume without overtraining? I know I'll pick this exercise that doesn't cause a lot of damage and just do do some more extra. Uh, I mean, more reps. when you're when you're working on the the pump, right? So you're when you're chasing uh, the pump, I see value in these. Or when you are really trying to work on connection, right? Get more connection to a, a muscle, right? I and similar to what we were talking about earlier about the stretch or the contraction position, I see value in these things. Other than that, I actually see them. Uh, I see them abused more in that space. Totally. So I, I, I remember training with obviously a lot of competitors when I was competing and a lot of their programming looked like this. They, they start with the, and we'll just use chest since all of them love to do chest, right? They start with either some good dumbbell press or maybe a barbell chest. And then the next three exercises that we would do, okay. Cause there's times where I'd hop in with guys, let them lead the workout just to see what they would do. You know, we would do, you know, this this incline, you know, barbell bench press to start off. I'm like, all right, cool. This routine's starting good. And then we go over and we hit, like, the hammer strength machine. Then we do cable crossovers. And yeah, a bunch of finishers. Yeah, a bunch of finishers. And we're just chasing the pump. The whole workout was that. It was like we did, like, one, what I would consider big bang for your buck exercise, the one that's really going to grow my chest, the one that's really going to make the most difference. We did one exercise of that. We did three sets, and then we're already out of it. Mm-hmm. And now we're on to all these other exercises where we're just pumping fluid in there. And psychologically, it would trick these guys to thinking that they're – because they get all pumped full of fluid. You're drinking yeah. water. You're doing high repetitions. You're connected really well to it. You get a lot of tension on it because it's cable work. And so they get all this fluid filled in, but then their chest doesn't grow that much because mm-hmm. they're, they're missing out on the really good exercises. Now – I prefer if I'm doing if you're doing single muscles or you know one muscle part or two muscles per workout, I want to get at least two or three really good compound type exercises, right. dumbbell, barbell type work, and then the very last exercise, the one exercise I'll do is this you know machine or cable work to kind of. Pl- but you would never trade uh, a big bang for your buck exercise. Never for a finisher. Never, no. and that that and that's what's most common. So the people that talk about finishers and stuff, what ends up happening is some kid sees that and like, oh my god, I so felt that, or they look at themselves in the mirror and they're all pumped up from it. And they're like, oh, it must have worked the best. And then they they're then their programming starts to look like a bunch of finishers and maybe one or two really good exercises in there. And it's like. So that's the that's the problem I see that this jargon comes from the bodybuilding space and they're the most guilty of of abusing these types of exercises. Mm-hmm. One of the best things I ever did was to get away from that and train more like a power. What, what benefited me the most as a bodybuilder was actually training more like a power lifter and getting away from all these supersetting finisher pumping type of exercises because I was missing out on the things that were really building the most muscle.